afternoon, ladies. I hope you're having a good weekend so far. Um, I believe from the looking at the names that are logged in that uh, you've all seen me before. Uh, but if you don't know me, my name is Scott Tadayan. I'm the Veterans Outreach Program Specialist at the Sea Caucus Vet Center. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do, um, purpose of vet centers uh, as a component of the Department of Veterans Affairs, um, and uh, you know, hopefully answer whatever questions you may have about um, you know, moving forward, utilizing a vet center if it's something you're interested in. So uh, our, our original uh, motto was keeping the promise, and uh, this is also the VA's slogan, uh, is the promise made by President Lincoln following the Civil War. Um, obviously, it's, it's genderized because soldiers at the time, officially, were all male, even though there were female uh, soldiers who supported the effort, but um, to care for those who bore the battle and for their families, essentially, is a more updated version of saying that. Um, those are the official description of vet centers. Uh, the important things to take from this community-based counseling centers, um, social and psychological services. Uh, we call what we do readjustment counseling, which is essentially the transition from time and service being a military uh, personnel to civilian life and, and all the challenges that are in, involved with that. Um, also can extend to active duty, National Guard and Reserve, and then secondary to that to the family. Um, and the purpose is so that you can be successful in your civilian life following military um, experiences. Where we came from, we were founded by Vietnam veterans who, at the time when they came home, knew that they needed help. Uh, and what they were experiencing, which later was uh, codified and, and able to be diagnosed as PTSD, at the time in the 70s, didn't have a name. And everyone before then, Korea, the World Wars, shell, it was called shell shock, battle fatigue, and the idea was that you deal with it and go get a job, go start a family, and you know leave, leave the war where it was. The differences with Vietnam was from a from a ethical standpoint, you couldn't always rationalize what you did in combat. You you couldn't get behind the nobility of the war like you could with World War One and World War Two. Um, Korea, to a lesser extent, but even still, the Korean vets felt like they did the right thing by being there. Vietnam was different. It wasn't this clear cut. Uh, good thing that we were doing. Uh, it was the first time really that, that service members would, would question, what are we doing here? Why are, why are we putting ourselves through this? Um, so as they came back, knowing they need help and were turned away essentially by the VA, there's nothing we can do for you. Um, they did what veterans tend to do. They look out for each other. And these groups would form of Vietnam veterans talking and and uh, griping and complaining to each other about what they were going through. Um, not a formal clinical counseling session at all, uh, usually involved some, some drink, maybe some smoke, but there was a positive effect to being able to talk through your experience with someone who shared it. Um, the, the, the buddy system, uh, the camaraderie of having that military unit uh, or and, and comfort of peers after you separate was really positive. So as these little splinter groups grew traction, it drew the attention of the Department of Veterans Affairs, where uh, Congress eventually voted to absorb these vet center programs into the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, which happened in 1979. And we were funded, we were staffed with professional mental health uh, providers as well as veterans on staff uh, to maintain what had been done uh, by those uh, initial vet center, uh, what they called wrap sessions. Um, so over time, we grew from only Vietnam veterans to other 
periods of combat uh, up till now um, with the, the current wars, Desert Storm, uh, the, the non-specific combat eras like Panama, Grenada, Kosovo. Um, and as we grew, the awareness of the importance of what we do grew as well. So that's why we've continued having this expansion to our eligibility because of the, the need for the support and the efficiency with with which we can carry our mission out. Uh, so a little bit of what our counseling services look like. The, the majority of our uh, client base is uh, combat-associated PTSD. Um, it's not only combat, um, but most of the time that's what we're uh, what we're seeing in our clients. Uh, and then similar to that MST, uh, similar effects on the person, different initiation of the traumatic event. Um, sometimes with MST, it can be knowing that someone else was assaulted and fear that it could happen to you. That constitutes MST. Um, Oftentimes, there's negative discharges that go along with MST. We will work with the, the veteran to address that as well, make sure you're getting all the VA benefits that you're entitled to. Um, readjustment counseling, like I mentioned, is that transition. That's really where we see uh, a lot of the support for National Guard and reservists who don't have a combat deployment but still need some type of support. Um, and we can extend these to... The family, like I mentioned before, um, individual groups, sometimes there are family groups, like a spouse group. Um, we can do couples counseling, family unit counseling. Uh, there's staff members on site who are trained in providing treatment to uh, children. So essentially, whatever the need is, um, we have a lot of availability to meet that for the veteran. Uh, bereavement counseling, this is a kind of our, our sacred mission. Uh, when there's a in-service death, the Department of Defense will contact Department of Veterans Affairs to have the closest vet center reach out to the surviving Gold Star family and offer bereavement counseling uh, while they grieve the loss. Uh, so that's it's one way that um, DOD and VA work together uh, in that terrible situation, uh, but, but we, we can offer that support to families. Uh, in my position in outreach, I get into having a little bit of experience and, and uh, dipping into VA benefits. So if you need to enroll in VA healthcare, um, file a disability claim or a pension claim, use your education benefits, the home loan, um, I know a little bit about each and uh, I know who to connect people with to pursue getting those benefits. So, um, you know, where referrals will come to me, someone who's interested in counseling, and then I pass that along uh, for our counselors to follow up. Uh, I may have someone who, no, I'm good on counseling. I'm just interested in filing a claim. I can help with running down that path with them. Uh, and then being that we're involved in the community, we have to know about these other resources that are available for needs that the VA maybe doesn't have the ability to support, like getting a job. Um, we work with a lot of employment agencies, uh, Department of Labor, uh, organizations that help with resume writing or on job training, um, things like that. Financial relief, there are a lot of charitable organizations that can offer money to pay bills and, and uh, sudden expenses that may come up. Um, homelessness, there, there's a VA program called SSVF, Supportive Service for Veterans and Families. Uh, there's three providers in the state, um, and so we need to be aware of all three and utilize uh, whatever may be best for that veteran in that situation. Uh, but the idea is to, to be able to make that quick referral and help prevent a homeless situation. Um, and then talking about uh, claims, I can help explain the process and uh, maybe even get it started with an intent to file form. Uh, but we always want to refer to a VSO, Veteran Service Officer, uh, so that they can 
follow the claim out, represent the veteran if that's needed, um, just so that you have that fallback of experience and um, certification from the VA that this person knows what they're talking about, knows what they're doing, and is officially authorized to, to represent you for in, in a claim situation. So one thing that makes makes us different, you don't need to be enrolled in VA healthcare. We will always encourage it if the veteran's eligible. Uh, it's not a bad idea to enroll even if you don't plan on using VA for your healthcare. Getting in the system is usually the, the block that we see uh, especially in later years. So we'll always encourage the veteran to enroll, uh, but you don't need to be to use a vet center. Uh, our services are completely free. You don't get a bill. You don't get a copay billed or insurance billing like the hospital may do. Nothing. Everything is completely paid for. Uh, vet center budget is a consistent paid line item on VA's overall budget. And everything that we provide is free. Uh, and what we do as far as counseling services is not have any kind of time limit associated with it. So a lot of times in the private sector, you'll see 12 weeks for depression course of treatment or eight week anger management. Um, we don't do that. And really it's because it can take a while for veterans to decide to open up. Uh, so we acknowledge that you can't, quote unquote, solve a problem in a limited amount of time, especially something as complex as PTSD, whether it's combat associated, MST, uh, or otherwise. So um, we have clients who've been with us for over 10 years, some over 15 years, uh, and they've made progress. But being able to have that consistent fallback of the support is there when I need it. We can, we can do that for them. Confidentiality is one of the biggest things that we hold uh, as, as a defining characteristic of a vet center. Your treatment records stay in the vet center where you're being treated. They do not get sent to other vet centers. They do not get sent to VA hospitals or clinics unless you want that for continuity of care. Sometimes that's uh, important if you have psychiatry at the hospital and vet center for counseling. It may be something that the, the veteran wants to have that communication between their providers, but it's not required and it's completely your decision. Um, in some cases, the veteran will ask us to send their records up in support of a claim to show I've been in treatment for what I'm going through and here's the proof, right? But we don't do it automatically where some uh, VA records can be pulled without your authorization when you file a claim, vet center is separate from that. Um, the only time we would release information or records that you're being treated at a, vet, at a vet center is under duty to warn where the veteran may be a risk to themselves or others, and it's all about making sure that everyone is safe. Um, in a situation like that, you have what's called a safety plan that would be carried out by the veteran's counselor notifying family, notifying police, just to make sure, like I said, everyone is safe, but we're not uh, violating confidentiality on a regular basis or anything like that. Um, this is important for clients of ours who are in law enforcement, firefighters, uh, currently in the National Guard or Reserves, may be concerned about losing their deployability status if they're in treatment. Uh, so knowing that we have this level of confidentiality uh, feeling comfort that their employer is not going to find out uh, gives a little bit more um, peace of mind about the whole process of seeking help. Uh, we are lucky in Sea Caucus to have this uh, tool, the Mobile Vet Center. Um, it is a vet center on wheels. That's vet center services wherever they're needed. So the back of the, the, the truck there is two counseling offices. Uh, one forward, one rear, and um, as long as we have a counselor with us, we can provide vet center counseling on site wherever we're needed. That picture right there happens to be from the Sussex County Fair. Um, <clears throat> we were not there doing counseling <laughs> on site, but um, that was in a, an outreach capability to show we're here, we're 
available is what we do, handing out information. Um, and the, it's hard to see in this picture, but the satellite dish on top connects us to VA internet and phone uh, so that we can be connected and accessible into uh, pulling someone's records. If you want to submit something up to the VA, we can do that on site. And it doesn't need to be um, something to say, I'll take your info and do it on Monday when I get back to the office. We can do it right there in the, in the vehicle. Um, so this one, uh, driven by my, my coworker Jerry, uh, is the, the one MVC in New Jersey. Uh, so he covers the majority of the state, New York City, um, sometimes into Pennsylvania, and he's currently up in Massachusetts because he got asked to go up there. So he, he's all over the place. These are your five locations in New Jersey. Sea Caucus, where I'm at, Bloomfield, Trenton. Lakewood and South Jersey. Um, South Jersey, because of such a large area, uh, Camden and Gloucester counties get support from Philly uh, vet centers, and Salem and Cumberland County get support from Wilmington, Delaware. Um, but South Jersey, which is located in Egg Harbor, has um, really Atlantic and Cape May County, but he bleeds over uh, to support to the west there. He comes up into Ocean and Monmouth County. Um, to help Lakewood. Uh, so really the, the, the outreach specialists in the state, we all work together to make sure needs are covered and we get to places where, where we're re requested to be. Right now, our outstations really aren't in effect uh, since the onset of the pandemic. But before the pandemic, we had a weekly or bi-weekly uh, established locations outside the vet center office to broaden our, our reach and, and get to places that are further away from the actual vet center office. Uh, so you can see we and Bloomfield were in Marstown and Hackettstown. Bloomfield was up in Oakland. Trenton has the base and are all around that central Jersey type area. Uh, Lakewood up in Manalapan. So uh, the idea being there are veterans in this area and it's kind of a ways to get to our office. Let us come out and make make it more accessible for veterans in that area. So we know right now Sussex County is something to keep our eyes on. Morris County, Warren County, Hunterdon County. Um, so my position is to find the need, bring it to our directors, and then our directors to set things up. The problem right now, of course, the pandemic makes that harder to do. Um, with VA being cautious and, and everyone's safety being in mind. And telehealth has made it easier, too. If you're further away, you may not need to worry about a closer location if you're comfortable doing your, your counseling over the phone or, or video. Uh, so this, this slide here, this is our, this is our staff. And um, I had this secondary thing here to show, you know, there are four of us on staff who are veterans, uh, two, two Army, one Marine, and, and one sailor and myself. And the, the point being that we continue that tradition of staffing vet centers with veterans because it's easier to make that initial connection with someone uh, and, and just the base level understanding of what someone may be going through or the difficulty in coming forward and asking for help because the four of us at one point in time all had been there ourselves. Uh, and then our other counselors and our director, although they're civilians, they have experience in working with veterans. So, um, you know, it's not a situation where we find people wanting to avoid uh, talking to the, the non-veteran clinicians. But, um, you know, sometimes if you're apprehensive, you may say, I prefer to talk to a veteran. We have the ability to accommodate that. I was show this picture because the, uh, the Vietnam Wall Memorial is really profound um, to just see the, the, the name after name after name loss of life from that, from that war and, and trying to imagine what it did to, to those who were there. Um, and this, this artwork is actually hanging in our, our office as well. Um, but the, the 
The quote really, really sums it up. For those who understand, no explanation is necessary. For those who don't, no explanation is possible. Um, and that applies not just to to loss, you know, combat loss, but just to service. It's really hard to describe to somebody what it's like to be in the military and and to have made the choice to go in uh, for whatever amount of time you were there and and experiences that you had. It's really hard to explain to someone what it's like and why you would do it. <laughs> and I've had I've had those experiences myself and, and this picture I feel uh, really encapsulates the, the idea of taking care of each other um, have, having each other's back in your darkest hour when the demons come call on me and we'll fight them together nobody should have to go through struggles on their own and veterans kind of understand that we're, we're always ready to help somebody uh, especially one of our own. Um, the downside is the effects of PTSD often make it feel like you're the only one going through what you're going through. So uh, in in my position and, and uh, people who we have helped and, and advocate for us as, a, as an organization, uh, you get that support to uh, people who maybe haven't sought out their own help yet and, and saying, listen, this helped for me. And come on, I'll, I'll go with you. I'll introduce you to, to Scott down at Sea Caucus. I've, true story. I've had that happen. Um, and, you know, it's, it feels great on our end because that's, that's instant validation that what we do matters and, and is having a positive effect. Uh, and then also it's helping us reach someone else who may then in turn uh, be able to, to pass that on to, to someone that they know. So that's, that's it for uh, the slides that I have and everything. My contact information is there, um, which I can put it in the chat for everyone. Or I know that Liz has it if, um, if anyone needs. And, um, you know, whatever, whatever the, the circumstance of your service is, whatever your needs are, I always recommend that you contact us. This is what's going on. This is what I need. We usually do everything we can to find a way to say this person is eligible for our, our services if you're making the call to use us. If it ends up being a situation where no matter what we try, we can't establish that, then we work with you to find a, way, a place that we can make a referral to so that you can still get the support that you need, even if it's not through us. So 